All right, so um, the uh, the project I was working on before, uh, what's it called? Uh, Hoof Beast. That's kind of on hold at the minute because I've started these new projects, which I, I'm showing now. Uh, what it is is uh, I was looking on the indie database and I saw this project. It's like some sort of um, online like post-apocalyptic game. Um, it's all wasteland kind of Fallout freestyle. Uh, and I saw this concept art of the uh, of this weird sort of mutant guy. Uh, I'll put the uh, the link in the description box. But uh, I don't know if I thought it was kind of cool, and I decided just to model that instead. Just um, it's kind of, I mean, the thing about the hoof beast is, I think when you work on a project and you leave it for like a a few weeks or something, you just lose all motivation to sort of work on it. So I don't know. When I open the project, I just feel all empty inside and stuff, so <laughs> I just I can't bother to do that anymore. So I just decided to start a new project and uh, just sort of invest my time in something else instead of just doing nothing. So yeah, I'm just uh, just blocking in some anatomical landmarks. Um, got my reference on a second monitor, which you can't see on this video. I always have reference up when you're working. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty much. Um, Started off with a base mesh um, from ZBrush, uh, some sort of standard male kind of guy, yeah, and I'm just sculpting some sort of exaggerated muscles on there, uh, trying to make it kind of human looking to begin with, and then uh, start to make it all mutant style, which I'm doing now, just adding in sort of like that weird arm, that the concept arms and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I mean this stage. You know the very first sort of hour or two on the model. You know you really just want to be focusing on big details and getting big forms sort of accurate. You know, don't worry about you know the tiny sort of micro details. Um, just sort of sculpting you know the big anatomical landmarks, which is uh, pretty much what I'm doing now. Um, what you saw me do on the face there as well, you can actually do uh, local subdivisions in, in ZBrush and uh, all you do is mask out an area that you actually want to subdivide uh, invert that mask and then just uh, hit subdivide or control D and uh, it will basically subdivide everything that isn't masked um, so it's just pretty cool to get in extra detail in specific places like you know the face um, subdivided it there now I'm just going back in, just adding some more detail, some more sort of bolder lines and stuff. Um, carving out that sort of, yeah, he has kind of like a, a weird strap around his arm and all the muscle and stuff is bulging around it so I'm just getting that sort of in place there. Um, and again, you know, just literally being really rough, being really sort of vague with the brush. Uh, the only brush I'm using on this so far is a clay build up to do this. Uh, it's a real nice brush, but I'm blocking it in that. Yeah, just trying to get the muscle groups really defined. I, was like, I want to make him really sort of, I don't know, really eccentric looking. Because he's a, a, an enemy, he's a mutant, so the more interesting he is, the more sort of exciting he'll be to fight against in the game. So just trying to make him look really cool and stuff. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it really, but you know, really sort of take your time on this sort of stage of the modeling. You know, don't try and rush this part. This is probably the most important bit, to be honest. Getting all the muscles right and uh, all the big sort of areas. It's when you subdivide and you go up into a higher poly count, it gets harder and harder to push around the uh, the polygons and make them look good. So, you know, really take this seriously, get good reference, uh, and everything will be alright. Yeah, the funny thing about the uh, the base mesh that uh, comes with ZBrush, I think it's called uh, Nick Mail or something. There's actually uh, a sub tool of the skull underneath the head, so uh, I'm just using that as a sort of underlaying kind of detail on this model. I'm gonna have like the skull poking through the skin, and it all sort of wrapping around the skull and stuff. So it's gonna look pretty brutal. Um, so I'm just compensating for that, as you saw, sculpting there. Uh, I'm just getting some pants in now. Uh, I did a video on this process which I did. Uh, I duplicated the model underneath that I just sculpted 
and then I hide out the areas I don't want to keep and then I just delete the hidden and dynamesh and then I just sculpt just because it gives me a, a kind of a, a whole mesh you know a finishable mesh that I can use not a hollow mesh because when you extract with a mask you often get these really thin sort of meshes that are kind of annoying to work with sometimes so I, I just like to work on a sort of completed mesh uh, same process there as well with the belt uh, duplicating hiding deleting hidden and then down mesh and then sculpting again and I also block in uh, some sort of boot just getting all the pieces that I need for this model sort of there uh, just so I can sort of understand what it is I'm making better um, yeah that's, that's, that's pretty much it for part one just blocking in first sort of two hours uh, yeah that's pretty much it's realist. Okay.